This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, May 6th. Last week, at its regular policy setting meeting, the Federal Reserve announced it would double down on the policies that have failed to produce anything but a stagnant economy. It was a disappointing but not surprising move. The Fed affirmed that it is prepared to increase its monthly purchases of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities if things don't start looking up. But actually, the Fed has already been buying more than the announced $85 billion per month. Between February and March, the Fed's security holdings increased $95 billion. From March to April, they increased $100 billion. In all, the Fed has pumped more than a half trillion dollars into the economy since announcing its latest round of quantitative easing in September 2012. Although many were up in arms when the Fed said it would buy $600 billion in government debt outright for the previous round, QE2, all seems quiet about the magnitude of QE3 because it doesn't come up with a huge upfront total price tag. But by the year's end, the Fed's balance sheet could hit $4 trillion. With no recovery in sight, where's all this money going? It's creating bubbles. Bubbles in the housing sector, the stock market, and government debt. The national debt is fast approaching $17 trillion with the Fed monetizing most of the newly issued debt. The stock market has been hitting record highs for the past two months as investors seek to capitalize on the Fed's easy money. After all, as long as the Fed keeps the spigot open, nominal profits are there for the taking. But this is a house of cards. Eventually, just like in 2008 and 2009, the market will discipline the bad actions of the Fed and seek to find the real normal. In the meantime, real families are suffering. While Wall Street and the government take advantage of access to the Fed's new free money, the Fed claims there is no inflation. But who hasn't paid higher prices at the grocery store, the gas pump, for tuition, for insurance? It's bad enough that household incomes have stagnated, but real purchasing power has declined so much that one in seven Americans, 47.3 million people, are on food stamps. 5 million are collecting unemployment insurance, with 21.5 million afflicted by unemployment, according to the government's own figures. That's 13.9%, close to double the 7.5% unemployment number reported last week. We are certainly not in a recovery. We don't see the long unemployment and soup kitchen lines like in the Great Depression, but that's just because the lines are electronic now. It's not surprising the Fed has decided to hand the American people more of the same failed policies. But it is disappointing. We know what the real solution is. Allow the marketplace to work. Allow entrepreneurs the chance to create instead of stifling innovation with arbitrary regulations. Allow interest rates to rise to equal the risk in the economy. Allow bad debts to be liquidated so we can build on a firm foundation. Stop printing money to benefit the government and big banks. Restore sound money to the economy and the American people. Sound money is the bedrock for prosperity and the best check on big government and crony capitalism. This Ridley O sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Half a million items for sale often cheaper than Amazon. The easiest way to convert your Bitcoins into real-world stuff. They're privacy-friendly. You don't even have to give your name. BitcoinStore.com